Hello for the cheap pieces of sketch from Fire 3 and today we are gonna play the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy game, the 30th anniversary edition. So this is the one that BBC put up. Link will be down in the description if you wanna watch it of course. I mean play it of course. So you wake up, the room is spinning very gently around your head, or at least it would be if you could see it, which you can't, it is pitch black. So turn on the lamp. There we go. Um, I am cracking my knuckles like there's no tomorrow. Um, good start to the day. Today is going to be the worst one of your life. The light is now on. I'm doing this because I actually recently watched the movie, so it's a pretty good movie. Bedroom, bedroom in the bed. The bedroom is a mess. So, uh, uh, get out of bed. And what there is is a, it is a small bedroom with a faded carpet and old wallpaper. There is a wash basin, basin. I don't know. A chair with a tidy dressing gown slung over it. So, take gown. And then we have to wear gown. And then, because when you take the gown, it also says, luckily, this is large enough for you to get a hold of, you notice something in the pocket. So, look in pocket. And then we have to take the anal jessic. That was kind of weird. But it doesn't actually go on your anus. And, oh. Whoops, <laughs> that was an accident. Then it also says there's a flathead screwdriver and a toothbrush. So, take screwdriver and take toothbrush. There we go. Uh, and then a tree collapses outside. I, I actually don't know why that happens. Let's see. Go south. Let's get the mail. This is the enclosed front porch if you're home and got it. And go south again. Uh, let's see. So, I don't care about that. All that lives between your home. So, Mr. Prosser from the local council standing on the other side of the boat loser. He seems to be wearing a digital watch. He looks startled to see you emerge and yells at you to get out of the way. Lie in mud, just like the movie and in the book. Now, wait. Time passes. Wait. And the noise of the giant bulldozer is so violently loud that you can't even hear Presser yelling the warning that you will be killed if you don't get the hell out of the way. You just seem gesticulating wildly. And then he, uh, here comes Ford Prefect saying, Hello, Arthur. And he took out his towel out of the satchel, so now we don't take towel. Uh, and then don't take uh, wait. The Ford and Prosser were talking, so now we had to wait, and then they stopped talking. Now go south. Now we're going to the pub, which would be go west. There we go. The pub is pleasant and cheerful and full of pleasant and cheerful people who don't know they've got about 12 minutes to live and are therefore having a spot of lunch. Okay, let's um buy a cheese sandwich. I don't know what I'll do with it, but I guess I could. Uh, in margin, people have performed in un... Uh, da -da -da. Since is Why does Ford hurry after me though? That made no sense. Uh drink beer. You'd better buy some first. Ford buys lots of beers and offers half to you muscle relax and he says in So drink beer. 
I don't get what that thing is that it does. I don't. I don't get it. It's a very good beer brewed by a small local company. You particularly like its flavor, which is why you wake up feeling so. Why you woke up feeling so rich? Oh, so he was hung over this morning. I see. You were at somebody's birthday party here in the pub last night. You begin to relax and interest yourself when Ford mentioned that he's from a small planet in the vicinity of Beetlejuice. Not from Guilford, as he usually claims you take it in your stride and say, Oh, oh yes, which part? It is really very pre pleasant stuff with a very good nutty flavor. A good dry nutty flavor. Some lit froth on top and a deep color what yeah what what deep color it could be blood red who knows it is at exactly room temperature you flick that the world can add a day. whatever ford mentions that the world is going to end in 12 minutes i cannot remember when the so i think i already one no one two okay So now my house got knocked down, and now we have to go east. We can give dog cheese sandwich. And then we go north. Here we go. There's our house. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see. I can't remember what we do now. I'm, I'm trying to think. Uh, yo. At Prosser. Begin to get a sore throat. Yell at Prosser. With the noise like a cross between Led Zeppelin's farewell concert and the eruption of Krakatoa. Uh, Krakatoa, I think it was. A uh, huge fleet of Vogon constructor ships flies overhead. And then I think we wait. But I don't quite want to do that yet. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Uh, throughout the noise, Ford is shouting at you, so let's pick. No, no, that's not what I want. Cake. Black. Device. Um. Examine. Black. Device. Now, this is pretty much like a hitchhiker's thumb. You know, like. When people stick up their thumbs and like try to get a ride, well, that's why it's called the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy because Ford is a hitchhiker with a hitchhiker thumb that has a big beam that goes up and reaches to ships and you know picks them up. You know, first gales whip across the land and thunder brings continuously. Ford fights to reach you, but the wind is too fierce. Let's see, now we, the electronic sub ether signaling device is shaped like a small fist with an extended thumb. Oh, it's literally a fist and a thumb. Various lights along its knuckles are currently blinking widely, indicating a spaceship in the vicinity. It has two small buttons, a red one labeled call engineer and a green one labeled hitchhike. There's a small label which reads another friend, uh, whatever about that. So let's... No. Press green button. It's dark again. Who? Uh, you are in dark. Let's see. Um. Wait, wait, wait. 
smell. There's something pungent being waved under your nose. Your head begins to clear. You make out. Okay. So, examine shadow. Ford removes the bottle of Centriginian mineral water, which he's been waving under your nose. He tells you that you are aboard a Vogon ship and gives you some tea nuts. Eat the peanuts. I don't think that works. Okay, um, eat peanuts. Okay, let's see. Um, let's see. Examine machine. The dispenser's tall has a button at around eye level and says babblefish. Um, if you didn't know what a babblefish was, it it actually swoons into your ear and eats unconscious waves of sound, I think it was, and poops out translation, pretty much. Um... Let's see. Remove gown. Let's see. I'm using a guide now, and I'm not even going to keep it hidden from you guys any longer. Wait four turns look closely at the room description. Have you noticed the senses now? Oh, wait. Aha. Uh -huh. Remove your gown. Hang gown on... Uh, let's see. Uh, I remember this part. What was this? It was, uh... Ah! Yes, I do remember. Sort of. Let's see. Wait. Now he's snoring. Take towel. And then take satchel. Um... Put towel over vent. Over, I, I don't remember what it was. Oh, put towel over grate. Put towel over grate. Holes, more holes, pretty much holes. <laughs> That's funny. A drain, large, smelly, drain-like, the perfect place to put something for safekeeping if you uh, never wanted to see it again. And as you can see, there are holes, more holes, and pretty much holes everywhere. <laughs> Let's see. Put satchel in front of dispenser. Complete waste of time! What do you mean, complete waste of time? Oh, dispensers. Put satchel. Oh, crap. In front. Uh, of robot panel. Uh oh. What have I done? Okay, the satchel is lying on the side in front of the tiny robot panel. It, it is, of course, well known that careless talk costs lives, but the full scale of the problem is not always appreciated. For instance, at that exact moment, you said put towel over vent. A freak wormhole happened in the fabric of space-time continuum. Uh-oh. And carried your words far, far back in time across infinite reaches of space to distant galaxy, to a distant galaxy where strange and warlike beings were poised. Oh, shit. Uh, that's a that's a joke. Uh, if you were to, you know, stay at the ending of the movie, pretty much at the titles. What did I, wait? What did I do? I did put such in front of robot panel. Let's do. Uh, put. Put mail 
on satchel. And then what we do is press the uh, dispenser dispenser button. Single babble fish shoots out of the slot. It sails across the room and hits the dressing gown. The fish slides down the sleeve of the gown and falls to the floor, landing on the towel. A split second later, a tiny cleaning robot whizzes across the floor, grabs the fish, and continues its breakneck pace toward a tiny robot panel at the base of the wall. The robot plows into the satchel, sending the bubble, la 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 la. Another robot flies in and begins madly collecting the colored plumel. <laughs> wow, what a, what a coincidence. The babblefish continued its flight, landing with a loud squish inside my ear. That just sounds like good luck to me, just saying. I mean, what are the odds that could happen? Actually... The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy probably could have told me if I had it. God. Um. Oh, I get it. Rube Goldberg sequence. It says, on the guide, it says, insert Rube Goldberg sequence here. And then it says, squish. I'll, I'll put down the guide in the description. Don't worry. I, I always do that, don't I? I do that. Always on the first video, of course. Uh, examine case. Okay. Flip switch. Whoops. A record plays to... A recording place to open the case, type in the second word from the second verse of the captain's fa current favorite. An incorrect will cause the case to explode. Oh my. Okay, I got it. I know what to do. Now all we have to do is wait. Wait. Uh, an announcement is coming over the ship's intercom. This is the captain. My instructions show that we've picked up a couple of hitchhikers. I hate freeloaders, and when my guards find you, I'll have you thrown into space. On second thought, maybe I'll read you some of my poetry first. Repeating. Wait. Um. Wait. Wait. Guards burst in and grab you and Ford, who come slowly awake. They drag you down the corridor to a large cabin where they strip you into large menacing chairs. Captain Quarters in the po Poetry Appreciation Chair. This is the cabin of the Vogon Captain. The cabin of the Vogon Captain. You and Ford are strapped into Poetry Appreciation Chairs. The captain is indescribably hideous, indescribably blubbery, and indescribably mid to dark green. He is holding samples of his favorite poem. God. Oh, by the way, um, if you ever hear Vogon poetry, um, most people would probably die from it. Uh, it was really weird to come up on that. Um, time passes. If he's going to read us his poetry, if he's going to read us his poetry, much as forward. I mutters Ford, sweating profusely. Just pray he softens us up with some cudgels first. Hello, hitchhikers, begins the vogue young captain. I've decided to read you a verse of my poetry. And now what we have to do is... Wait. Whoops. Oh, frittled grunt bugly. Thine actorations are to me. I don't even know what that means. Uh, wait. As plural gravel blotch, it's an allergic be I don't even know what that means. But I do remember something. Let's see. Where are you? And in, let's say to open the case, type in the second word from the second verse. 
Plurtled. Plurtled. Got it. Hopefully I remember that. Um, let's see, where was I? Shoot. Uh, enjoy the poetry. Wait. Group, I implore thee, my footing turling drones. Wait. And hoopsiously drangle me with crinkly bindle whirls, or I will rend thee in the gob. Oh, I, I totally get what it means by it's bad. This is a squalid room filled with grubby mattresses, unwashed cups, and unidentifiable bits of smelly alien underwear. Uh, hey, guard shouts for Do you really enjoy this sort of thing? Shouting, stumping around, shooting people? Is it... I, I just skipped some of it. Um, 